Justin, part of the job, of course, is to always be ready when coaching changes happen. And you're always going to have a short list of people and you're always going to be prepared for this eventuality. And, and you'd been down this road before with Coach Nagy and he had entertained other notions. At what point did this seem like it was going to be seriously something you had to consider? You know, it's serious enough uh, when he sat down with me the first time, um, you know, and much like the last several years. And uh, we've had uh, numerous coaches because of their success. Uh, people want to come and talk to talented people. And so, um, you know, we've kind of gone through this process now the last three or four years. And I think we've got a good strategy. We kind of know what we're uh, uh, looking for and, and then how we want to go about doing it. And, and that's really helped us. Uh, you know, it's hard when you lose somebody you care about. Uh, that's done a great job, and at the same time, uh, you know, it, it's been uh, uh, pretty smooth, and we're really excited about where we can go because we were prepared. We see number amounts thrown out there in terms of salaries. Do you feel like that in the state of South Dakota, we can offer competitive enough salaries to keep coaches from leaving? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Absolutely, you know, and we uh, we worked very hard uh, to uh, improve our men's basketball program, and that that work's been ongoing the last couple of years. But uh, even in this case, you know, there's there's a market value, and we understand uh, and know and have the data on what that is. And uh, we felt like uh, you know we put a, a really good uh, piece together in regards to Scott, knowing that you want to keep the ones that uh, you love having around. At the same time, if, if he chose to do something else, that we're uh, able to attract a good pool of candidates. And I, Jeff, I think a lot of people get hung up on just salary, but it's assistant coaches pools. Mm-hmm. It's the ability to do cost of attendance. It's the ability to do uh, maybe a few charter flights or some other things within the budget. So there's a whole thing that you look at and, and our investments in men's basketball are right where they need to be for us to be competitive. It seems like the Board of Regents is finally catching on to the realities of the world and that you've got to be able to have that ability to offer coaches multi-year contracts. And it was interesting to see that finally late last week they, they came on board with this whole thing. How much of a stumbling block has that been for you over the years when you have discussions about coaches coming to South Dakota State? It, it hasn't been a problem for us. Um, and I've tried to say before, it's a great tool to have, uh, much like uh, you know, you you got to recruit to a good town. You got to recruit to a good university. You got to recruit to where they can win. But having that tool where you can uh, kind of communicate some other things over a two or three or four uh, year period uh, with a program, it helps you do some planning, uh, and it certainly helps attract. But you know, we've had such a tremendous track record, and a lot of people talk about. Stig and AJ and Coach Nagy in regards to here a long time, but Brad Erickson, Rod DeHaven, Lang Wiedemeyer, we've got a bunch of coaches that have been here uh, for an extended period of time. So really, it hasn't been an issue with uh, any of the coaches we have here or the ones that we've hired recently. As you move forward now, is this a process that will be handled internally in Brookings, or will you reach out for some national assistance? No, we're, we're handling it, and uh, you know we'll, we'll, we'll look uh, – Obviously, we're very aware, uh, it, close to our own marketplace. Uh, but, you know, I, I would uh, say we're concentrating on the region. Um, we'll look nationally, but I think it's important that some folks, uh, if you are national, some roots here or having recruited this area, having an understanding uh, of, of the mid- upper Midwest or the Plain States, I think those things are uh, important and, and are part of our uh, kind of measurement of criteria, uh, but it's uh, you know wide open. We're we're reaching out to a lot of people, and frankly, uh, a lot of people have reached out to us as well. Does someone having a background as a head coach is that a prerequisite to be considered for this job? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. I you know I I look for I you know I'm really in the business of uh, talent retention and talent acquisition, and uh, that's one of the most important things that we do. You have to have good people good people attract other good people. And so, um, you know, there's a whole bunch of different experiences that matter. Um, You know, if you've been a head coach, you obviously uh, don't have to deal with the adjustment of moving into the chair. But, you know, for me, I came from an assistant position to have the opportunity to be an athletic director. And, uh, you know, everybody who's moved up to those roles has had to have that chance. And so um, there are a lot of quality people uh, at different levels in the organizations. As a mid-major program, and you can never really look into somebody's heart and their mind when they're accepting a position or considering a position, but as a mid-major program, do you have to accept the fact that some people may look at this as a stepping stone job? Well, yeah, I think you build it up. And and really what's nice uh, and what I love about South Dakota State 
you know, we have a mentality here that I would think is, frankly, more uh, autonomy five or at least big 10, big 12 and how we think about our business and the work that we do. Our, our scale might be just a little different, but I think because of that, uh, you can have success here. Uh, you can you can uh, earn enough money to be uh, happy for an extended period of time, but if you also have tremendous success and another opportunity comes up where you want to move up to the uh, autonomy five level, uh, that's great too. I mean, we don't um, ever evaluate things on that. Life's about providing people opportunities, and if somebody has a chance to go up a level because of success, then our university will be better off for it. Uh, the key is, again, you got to go out and find uh, the next talented person to keep that thing going. Timing, of course, in these situations is always crucial. I'm reminded of the John Wooden quote, be quick but don't hurry. Does that apply in a situation like this now? Yeah, absolutely. And I think that's why you do a lot of homework ahead of time and, and you get prepared so you can do a large volume of infor- uh, work uh, in a short period of time uh, without skipping steps. And, you know, any time you're in this uh, scenario, uh, you know, minutes feels like a day and a day feels like a week. Um, but at the same time, uh, you've got to make sure that you've done uh, enough homework, made enough calls, checked on enough people, um, left it open long enough to get somebody. I mean, there's a lot of different factors that go into it. So we'll move uh, at the pace that uh, is appropriate, and uh, we'll make sure that we cover those things. But I would also expect us to move very quickly. While we're talking, i got to ask you about the Dana J. Dykehouse Stadium update. How did the winter treat you in terms of the construction season? Uh, it's been great. Um, I were, we're many, many days, weeks, and uh, frankly months ahead in terms of the schedule. Uh, that helps uh, keep you on budget as well. Mm-hmm. So that's uh, that's been a very positive uh, impact. And, you know, we've got everything kind of lined up. I think as people have come by, even in the last couple of weeks, it gets more exciting because it's taking the form. Uh, you can see seating and it's you can tell what the stadium is going to really look like. There's some glass that's been put in and um, it's coming along really well. Uh, I'm, re- I'm getting really excited. I wish we could kind of skip spring football and head right into the season. <laughs>